what, what the haters talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? Retailer H&M got dragged through the mud, took a big hit on their stock, and was forced to apologize for dressing a little black boy in a hoodie bearing the words, coolest monkey in the jungle. Now, the mother of the little boy, she took exception to people calling out H&M. She didn't like it. She didn't see any problem with it. These are her words. That's my son. I've been to all the photo shoots, and this was no exception. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion about this. This is one of hundreds of outfits my son has modeled. Stop crying wolf all the time, an unnecessary issue. So let me get this straight. She claps back at people who clap at H&M for basically clapping on her son putting her son out there, having her son look like an idiot, and also is going to have her son being teased while he's at school. The mother I gave the benefit of the doubt to because I understand how many of these mothers schedules work and I understand the patterns when you have a child who is a model or an actor or an actress. Sometimes the mother, the father, whoever is not there, can't be there. They have to leave and go run an errand. They come right back. Or sometimes they ask to step out of the room. Sometimes, sometimes the kid don't even want them in the room because they don't feel comfortable. They don't, some of the parents, they are a little pushy and, you know, they jittery and the kids feel more comfortable being by themselves while they're working. The mother said, I was there the whole time. So now this leads me to believe that the mother was cooning for capital. She put profit over her son's dignity. She knows just as well as anybody else about the history and the negative connotations that that word monkey in reference to black people have historically in the West. She knows. You better believe she knows. But she didn't care. She want to get that money. She bought that check. I hope you're listening to this video too. She want that check. Sold a son. I threw a son under the bus for a check. Believe you me, man. This thing is going to hunt that boy for the rest of his life. I can guarantee you kids are very, kids can be very evil. They're going to ride him on that playground. They're going to ride him at school. He can be at the bar when he's 40 years old having a drink. Somebody going to walk in there. Yeah, you, you the little monkey, huh? Yeah, yeah, your mama was a duh, duh, duh. Yeah, they going to call him on that. Trust me. The mom approved the whole thing. Ain't that something? Some of y'all are a little bit more cynical than I am. Some of y'all was like, you know what? I bet the mama knew. The mama knew all the time. The mama knew. <laughs> I don't know. I, I try to give people the benefit of the doubt. I don't, I don't know. I didn't know the woman. Still don't know her. But I tried to give her the benefit of the doubt. But yeah, she sold it out. Now somebody asked me, well, Will, since the mother is saying she don't have a problem with it, should we just drop it? No, because this is bigger than the mother. Whether she had a problem with it or not really doesn't matter. I mean, she should have had a problem with it, but since she don't, doesn't change the situation. It's still racist. And you better believe H&M knew. 
They knew exactly what they were doing, man. This was not an accident. Again, these people are college educated. They, many of these people have traveled abroad. I bet you almost anybody who work at H&M has been to America at least once. Man, they know what's going on. Those people follow American history. They know what's happening with America. And you better believe somebody saw it and, and said, you know what? You know, I don't think we should do this. Uh, or you think, or do you think this is cool? And then somebody was like, well, what's the problem? Let's, let's, let's assume that they didn't know, right? Let's, let's play like they didn't know, right? And somebody brings it up. Well, what's the problem? Well, you know, in America, you know, they don't, you know, uh, the blacks, you know, was referred to by racist white folks as, as monkeys. And, 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 you know, that's considered a derogatory term and when referencing black people. And somebody else said, man, get the fuck out. Man, we finna do this, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then the other one was probably like, yeah, I knew all of that, man. But w wouldn't it be fun just to see what happens? And somebody else was like, man, you know, the stock prices are going to go down. And then the boss the boss probably didn't hear, the big boss probably didn't hear the stock, the stock prices going down thing. But he probably co-signed the whole racist, uh, the whole racist ad. He, he, he co-signed it. He or she, whoever they are, guarantee they co-signed it. Leadership starts at the top. If you got a bunch of racist people working with you, man, you a racist yourself. That's just what it is. The leadership set the tone. This, this woman, her not being on board with people being upset and all that stuff, that don't stop the agenda that doesn't stop people being upset and people protesting or boycotting H&M and putting them on blast. We've always had sellouts in the movement. That's all historically. That's always been sellouts. I'm talking about people who will sell out their community, sell out their whole ethnicity for a check. For self, out of self-interest, we've always had those type of people. And so they're placed, they're put in positions of uh, power sometimes and just positions of influence just to run interference and confuse people. They're like, oh, well, 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 he feels this way and, you know, and if she's not worried about it, why, why should I worry about it if, if you know, if Stephen A. Smith is a, big time sportscaster and he's saying it's cool and I respect him because he's successful and you know he's done it the hard way if he's saying it's okay to chuck and jive then you know like you know I guess it's okay if he's chucking and jiving it's okay for me to chuck and jive if Charles Barkley chuck and jive it's okay for me to chuck and jive if Stacey Dash chuck and jive it's okay for me to chuck and jive that's how they do it they always put these people in place just to run interference so that they can, so that people can say, well, they're not racist. I wouldn't be surprised if H&M hire a, a black coup now or a black CEO or a black marketing director, something along those lines, product, what do they call it? A product, uh, what do they call those people? Uh, not product placement, but whatever. But anyway, it's the person who, uh, who, 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 who checks out the product to make sure it meets a certain standard. I think it's, uh, it's not quality control, but it's something along those lines. But you get what I'm talking about. These people know exactly what they're doing. Now, Here's the sad part about all of this. This is a very sad part. Not only do you have the mama acting like this is no big deal, you have a number of black people online making jokes about this. There's a number of black people I've seen posting on social media who saying they don't see a problem with it. The inability to learn 
about the past, to learn from your previous mistakes, is the reason why you make those same mistakes over again. Why do you think the police are just gunning down black folks left and right? This is the modern day lynching. This is with Johnny Law on their side. Why do you think people are so bold to yell out racial epithets? I mean, to do it without fear of consequence. We didn't, we didn't fight the fight all the way through. We thought everything was cool once they let us sit on the front of the bus. We thought it was over. Man, you got people out here every single day trying to thwart black progress every single day. You don't learn from your history, you're bound to repeat it. There are people, black people out here who are damn disgraced, not just to the race, but they're disgraced to their mamas and daddies. They get mad when other black people complain or boycott or protest or do anything other than nothing. They, oh, they, well, they get, they complain about that too. They complain about everything. They get mad about everything, and they don't want to do nothing. They ain't never stood for nothing in their sorry ass lives. And so when they see y'all trying to stand for something or do something, they be like, man, it ain't gonna change nothing. That's one of the first things that a pessimist, uh, a bootlicker, will say. It ain't going to change nothing. All change started with verbal communication, and then that was an action that followed up. All change. Some people just don't want to be subjected to somebody looking at them, expecting them to do something, because their asses don't want to do nothing but accept they're not going to protest, boycott, stand for nothing, but if the benefits come their way because of somebody else doing it, they will happily accept those benefits. You wanna know why some people don't wanna wake up? Because as long as they're asleep, they don't have to do anything. No more talk. What the talking about?